Uh, hey guys, how's it going? It's Lee Rose here. Hope you're doing super freaking fantastic. Uh, I've got a lot of questions um, recently and, well, you know, not so recently, about my new job as a flight attendant. And so I kind of wanted to come on here and let you guys, like, just, just answer some stuff because, you know, it's a thing. Um, so first I wanted to start with uh, some just, like, y'all really need to know this stuff. It's not necessarily things that we can say while in uniform because it might not come across the most like professional-ish. Um, of course you know how I am. This comes entirely from a place of love and I'm not trying to be a bitch. I'm just trying to inform you about like why we do the things that we do. Um, no sensitive information here or anything like that. But it's like we want to be able to tell everybody this, you know? All right. So without further ado, here's the things that I thought of. So, number one, I'm reading all these off my phone because I've been keeping these, uh, storing them up for a while. Um, okay, so what's the first one? Okay, so taxi takeoff and landing is actually the most dangerous part of the flight, like, point blank. And it seems like it's kind of common sense and a lot of people will say that they know this, but they don't act like they do. Uh, so when you're in the airplane and it's anywhere near your taxi, like we're on the ground or we're taking off or we're landing, that's when you really, 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 really need to have your seatbelt on and you need to stay in your seat. This isn't the time to like run to the bathroom. Don't power chug coffee and get the coffee poops like as you're getting on the plane. It's just, that's not how, and people really get hurt from this. Like you can fall, you can hurt somebody else in addition to yourself. Like it's just, it's not, the time to mess around, you know? Um, that includes the uh, bags that everybody has. So like when you're sitting at the bulkheads, so if you have a wall in front of you, um, you have to have your bag up above for the same exact reason. If something were to happen, nothing's securing that and your feet don't count. <laughs> um, so it could go flying and hurt someone. Somebody could trip over it if there's like an evacuation or something, knock on counter. Um, the, like the reasons are infinite and they are related to safety. Like. The thing that people don't seem to fully comprehend is that when we tell you to do something, it's not because we're like micromanaging your flight, it's because we are required to because it's your safety on the line. Um, what else is there? Overhead bins. Oh, okay. So it just said the bulkhead thing. So while everybody who has a seat, like you do have the right to use the overhead bin space, the, the fact of the matter is there just isn't enough and everybody everybody knows that if you've flown any time in the past like five years you know that there's just not enough space um so for real the easiest thing to do to make life so much easier is number one put your bag in the right way come on like nine times out of ten it's wheels first like that's it there are some of them where you have to do wheels first but instead of like that it's like on its side but those are the exception um so only put your big stuff in the overhead and if there is any way for it to fit underneath the seat in front of you then put it underneath the seat in front of you it saves so much time and so much space just please it, like everything about this seems to be like common courtesy like for everybody else you know um what else is there uh the seat shuffle so if you want to trade seats with somebody like boarding is so 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 hectic um, so don't start like trying to sit all together and trade your seats and blah, 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 while the boarding process is happening because that slows everybody down. And a lot of like something that a lot of people don't know, which is completely understandable for you not to know is flight attendants don't get paid until the aircraft door is shut. So we don't get paid until everybody is done boarded, the bags are taken care of and everybody is in their seat. So. Number one, it's frustrating for us. And number two, like, y'all wanna get there on time, right? <laughs> um, so the easiest way to do it, unless it is like a safety thing, like if you and your like disabled grandmother or like a really, really small child, like, I'm not talking like 10 years old can handle themselves, but like a three-year-old or a four-year-old or something like that, like if you're sitting apart, then talk to a flight attendant. But otherwise, like, let's just wait until after we're up in the air just for everybody's sake. 
Uh, what else is there? Oh, cell phones, interference, Wi-Fi, stuff like that. So it's true that cell phones and, and the signals that they produce and mass can affect the systems of the airplane. That's not, that's not a myth. That's actually what can happen. Um, so like, and the, and the thing is too, it's like, you never know. I'm sure that everybody's had an incident where they've forgotten to put their phone on airplane mode, which is totally like, I mean, I've done it before too on accident and generally it's fine. But the thing is, if more than a handful of people do that, there's going to be problems. So for everyone else's sake, turn your cell phone off. Like don't off, but like airplane mode. It's, it's super simple. Um, but also, uh, so many planes have Wi-Fi nowadays that um, having Wi-Fi access doesn't mean that you can Skype or FaceTime. Um, like using messenger apps are totally fine, like Facebook or, or the iMessage, if that goes through for you, or Viber or WhatsApp or anything like that. It's totally, totally fine. But no voice communication is the big thing. Um, number one, it takes up so much bandwidth. You probably don't want to do that and it wouldn't work very well anyway. But also, like, you don't want to be, like, voice communicating when we're trying to, like, you need to be very aware of what's happening on the plane at all times, you know, if that makes sense. So both as a safety thing and as a courtesy thing. Um, what else do we have? Okay, when it comes to the seatbelt sign being on, when the seatbelt sign is on, you have to be in your seat with your seatbelt fastened, like point blank, that's what it is. And when you don't listen to what a flight attendant tells you, number one, you're putting yourself in danger. Number two, you're putting others in danger, I've said that before. And number three, you're basically kind of telling everybody else that it's okay not to listen to what we tell you. Dude, I didn't go through two months of like away from home trading for nothing. Like, trust me, you want to be in your seat with your seatbelt fastened. And the more that we have to argue with you about doing that, the less time that we're in our seat, which is really uncomfortable by the way, with our seatbelt fastened, which means that we're in more danger because of it. When the seatbelt sign comes on, it's because there's going to be turbulence. So. And as an aside for everybody who's afraid of flying, turbulence by itself doesn't take down an airplane. So that's just not how science works. It'll be weird and it'll be uncomfortable, but turbulence by itself won't do any damage. So seriously, you don't have to be afraid. Um, I mean, granted, if somebody's coming down the aisle during turbulence when they shouldn't be and they go flying into you, that's a whole different story. So, you know, seatbelt. Um, uh, the other thing is, I had so many people ask me, can I use the bathroom when the seatbelt sign is on? It's like, I'm not going to tackle you to the ground. Like, if you're going to get up and use the bathroom, I'm literally not going to physically restrain you. But you're, like, you're an adult. If you're about to, like, crap all over yourself. I mean, there's just so many things I could say here. But, but I'm not going to tell you yes. Are you going to do it anyway and make me look like a jerk? Probably. But, like... Let's, let's just have priorities here and try to kind of like pace ourselves when it comes to our bathroom use, you know? Um, what else is there? So, oh, the carts. Okay, so it should be kind of like goes without saying, but the carts are super, super heavy. They're like, at, oh, well over 100 pounds, like pushing two most of the time. They're really hard to move nine times out of 10. They're like half broken, which is super frustrating. Um, and they don't have trash and food or drink on the same cart, like for hygiene, like it's kind of gross, you know? So please don't try to hand us your trash when we're coming down, like offering you drinks and stuff like that. Um, and please don't ask for a drink when we have the trash cart out because then we're not going to be able to run back and then run forward because number one, the cart's in the way and we can't move the cart that quickly to go back and forth and do it. So... Um, if you can't get out, like if you're blocked by somebody that's sleeping, just like hit the call button once we're done. Um, or if you can get out easily enough, just like come back towards the lab and ask us. Like that's, that's completely okay. Don't congregate over by the bathroom or in the galley or anything like that. But like different parts, different purposes, you know. <laughs> um, what else is there? Oh, okay. So one of the biggest things that people don't know, which is again, totally understandable, is that um, everything that we do is regulated by the FAA. So um, that, that is a, like the Federal Aviation Administration, which makes all of the rules and all the regulations and everything like that. So if we don't follow exactly what they tell us to do when, in regards to flights, then we get in trouble for it. 
if you don't follow exactly what it is, then our flight is in violation so we can get fined a ton of money. If you have your, like, for example, like your bag at the, at the wall at that bulkhead um, for taxi takeoff and landing, and a federal air marshal sees it, the flight attendant can get fined like 10K or something like that. So you're, you're, I know that you probably don't care, or a lot of people probably don't care. Oh, I had an incident about that the other day. Um, but the thing is, like, we're not financially able and we're not willing to put ourselves at that great of a risk, you know? So, like, just keep in mind that when you don't do what you tell us, like, what we tell you to do, number one, it is a rule that you have to listen to the instructions of the flight crew. Like, they say that before every flight, it's in the magazines, it's in everything. Like, that's a thing that you sign up for when you buy a ticket. Um, and also, like, we're not, it's, it's a huge deal, like, for, for every reason under the sun. Um, I think that's pretty much all I had there. I'll double check through my notes really quick. I could have sworn I had something else. Um, but yeah, now I did open up two questions. So let me go back and see what you guys asked me. <laughs>